Hello friends, Father Joe here. Hope all is going well. It's a new month. It's October. And I uh, just wanted to update you on a few things as we get into the last, you know, quarter of the year. Um, this weekend, uh, October uh, 2nd and 3rd, uh, as you probably know already, they're having a deposit, you know, uh, plastic bottles, cans, drive uh, to aid our youth ministry and future youth events. And hopefully you'll be able to bring some of your bottles and cans that you've been saving um, to the church Saturday between, say, 9.30 and 11 over at the garages in the uh, parking lot of the, of the church. Or Sunday you can do it, you know, bring them just before Mass at the 8 o'clock Mass. Or if you want to bring them anytime between 9 a.m. and 10.30 on Sunday morning, uh, you can do that too. And again, just uh, there'll be people at the garages to accept these from you. And we really appreciate your help and the help of our youth. In a few days after that, on Tuesday, we're ha having something we've had in many years. We didn't have it last year because of the uh, pandemic. But we're having communal anointing of the sick. And this anointing of the sick happens at church. And it happens in the context of a mass. And that's going to be Tuesday the 5th at 11 a.m. And if you come, come for lunch afterwards. There's going to be a nice little lunch uh, in the uh, parish hall uh, after the Mass. You know, some people, you know, wonder, you know, should I get a, a anointed? Should I not get anointed? And certainly we encourage people to consider being anointed if they're, say, 65, 70 or older. But uh, some people, you know, they have physical uh, problems. We might have other problems in our lives that are sort of weighing down on us. And uh, that would be a, a reason also to consider being anointed. Because when, when we, we come before the Lord, we come for the sacrament, uh, it's a reminder that, you know, Christ is the healer. And Christ really cares for us as a whole person, body, mind, and spirit. And... You know, we, we just sort of present that to the Lord, along with our doctor and everybody else that we might visit. You know, it's a, we're all in this together. And, but the sacrament um, certainly is powerful. It really reminds us of that presence of the Lord uh, in our lives, but particularly in our journey of, you know, getting a little older. And I know where you're coming from. I'm right with you. And... Uh, you know, Father Joe, you've been anointed? Yeah, I've been anointed like at least two or three times. You know, and sometimes people, you know, they don't come to that um, anointing service, which is fine. But maybe in six months, you're going to say, Tia, I'm going to be a, uh, having a major operation. And a lot of times there's chaplains at the hospitals that can anoint you. But you also might consider having the priest in your parish, or this parish in this case, uh, anoint you. So if you came to church or called the, the priest up and say, Hey, Father, you know, I'm, I'm coming to the uh, 1030 Mass. Could I, could I see you about 1015 to, to be anointed? And, and I do that on occasions with people when they ask. We, we go into the chapel. I have the oils there already. And we say a little prayer. And we pray that the Lord will be with us uh, during that time. That applies to you uh, with a surgery ahead. But again, we, we encourage you to consider that. And certainly we have some homebound that are unable to come. There's nobody that can bring them uh, for whatever good reasons. And uh, th in those cases, uh, I will go out to the parish in the next month after the anointing of the sick to anoint people at their homes uh, who couldn't be with us. So uh, consider that and consider maybe bringing a family member to this anointing of the sick or the next door neighbor or a friend on Tuesday, the 5th of October, 11 o'clock Mass, St. Mary's Crescent. There's much that begins in September and now we start to get into full gear during October. And one of those areas is what we call faith formation, preparation for the sacraments also. And uh, we know that there are some children um, already registered and. Uh, their parents came to the recent parent meetings. But we also know that there's some children that maybe are new to the parish. 
maybe there's some children that, you know, just haven't gone or haven't re-registered from last year to this year. And so if you fit any of those categories, uh, consider calling up the parish offices, talking with the Faith Formation Office, talking with, with Rachel Collette, and registering your child as soon as possible. And hopefully as soon as possible is going to be within the next five to seven days. Uh, it's important that our children, you know, grow in the faith, they grow in the faith. And growing in the faith, as we know, is just not, you know, who is God? God loves me. You know, God is triune. It's more than that. It's about how do we live the faith that has been passed on to us? How do we live as Jesus calls us to live? As we know, the great commandment, love God, love others, be faithful disciples. And how do we incorporate that into our lives wherever we find ourselves, whether it's in our houses, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our schools? How do we relate to the people we know as well as the people we don't know? So um, give Rachel a call here in the next few days uh, if you haven't registered or if you just have any questions. Uh, please do that. Another, uh, it might be a little new area, so to speak, uh, that we've entered into here in the parish was uh, outreach to our college students. In uh, recent weeks, um, some people in the parish, uh, was staff people, uh, put together a, a little package, if you will, uh, and sent it along to our collegians. A little note saying, how are you, whatever. Uh, a little gift card, you know, to uh, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts, wherever. Something they, you know, just sort of take a walk, uh, leave the dorm room, and uh, go out with a friend maybe and have something to eat or drink. So uh, we did that. And I have to say that uh, the res we got very, very positive responses from that, not only from the, the students, the collegians, but also from uh, parents of these children. And certainly uh, it's a great thing that happened, and we hope to continue to do this at, not, at least another two or three times uh, in the year to come. Um, just because people are not living home, they're still part of the community. And this is one way that we can keep keep touch, keep in touch with them. You know, doing what I'm doing now is another means of doing that. You know, the video. And, uh, you know, how do we, and how do you and I, be, you know, once we see this or once we hear something, the good news, if you will, how do we share that with somebody else? You know, uh, uh, it'd be great to hear somebody say to me, hey, Father, I heard that you were doing a thing for collegians. And... Uh, uh, my kids, you know, in college, and uh, we didn't hear about that, or we're not registered. C can 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 you help us? Sure, we can help you. Just give us the appropriate information. We're happy to do it. About a year and a half ago, just as the pandemic was starting, it had been the tradition of the diocese that we would uh, begin what's called the Bishop's Appeal. And I think many of you uh, remember it. You know, uh, every parish was asked to raise a certain amount of money uh, for the Bishop's Appeal. And, and it was, that money was used in a variety of programs in the diocese that benefit the parishes and the people of the parish directly and indirectly. And um, the pandemic came uh, there was also a little change in scheduling by the diocese, the, the, the stewardship office, as, as it's called, and the pandemic. So a lot of stuff got lost last year, and I know that uh, stuff was sent out a little bit later, whether it was June, July, August, I don't know. But I, I know many people did support the Bishop's Appeal, which is now called, now called, the Diocesan Appeal. I'm still calling it the Bishop's Appeal. And I work for the diocese, so I can only imagine what you're thinking. They changed the name, that's what I said. But if you see Diocesan Appeal, think Bishop's Appeal. It's the same program, new name, you know, new logo, it's the same animal, <laughs> okay? And, you know, I, I said this at church a couple of months ago, uh, and hopefully you'll be reading information that will be sent by the diocese, about the diocesan appeal, about what was formerly the bishop's appeal. 
But I said one of the agencies that is helped by by uh, the Bishop's appeal, the diocesan appeal, is Catholic charities. Catholic charities. You know, it was it just seemed to be every week, maybe more than once, there'd be an, uh, an item on the news that Catholic charity was was going to be in Herkimer County. Catholic Charities was going to be down in Albany someplace. Catholic Charities was going to be down in Delaware County. All places of our diocese. And there was going to be a food distribution to whoever came. And they did that for weeks and weeks on end. And I think they continue to do it. We, we don't see the, the PR that they're doing it uh, too often. But this is the vicious appeal uh, at work. One of the ways it's at work in our diocese, helping other people. Um... So you can look and say, I'm glad to support the Bishop's Appeal, especially in this way. And there's one way. So when are you going to get something from the diocese, the Bishop's Appeal Office, the Diocesan Appeal Office? It's uh, estimated, I can't give you an exact date, but it's somewhere around the, the middle of the month, the 15th or 20th of October. You, you should deliver, uh, receive in the mail a mailing for the Diocesan office, the, the diocesan appeal. Even I can't say this. Uh, but think, bishop's appeal. And I hope they say someplace on the, on the, on the stuff, formally the bishop's appeal. Okay, that, that helps us all. Um, and, and they're going to send, uh, some of you, you will receive this, we, we know, um, a little envelope, you know, they ask you to fill it out. And when you fill it out, make sure you put St. Mary's, comma, Crescent. St. Mary's, comma, Crescent under the church name. Don't put St. Mary's. There's, I think there's 182 St. Mary's churches. No, I'm just kidding. But even where we live right now, there's two St. Mary's, four miles apart. So in order to help the diocese keep track of all this, uh, put St. Mary's, comma, Crescent. In addition to the mailings, the diocese will be uh, sending out. And they are the lead person in taking care of this. The parish's participation or um, personal efforts in mailings to the parishioners is greatly reduced. And I think the diocese would hope that in the future we would send out no, no information like that uh, through the mail, that they would do it totally. But I think we're in a little fuzzy time, and, and so we're going to send out also a mailing about the same time. So if you get them both, you know, just pick one. If you send it to us, we will send it to the diocese. But we want to make sure every parishioner that we have uh, is contacted. And so this is one way of making sure there's no, you know, people don't fall through the cracks, so to speak. So you'll be getting that. And don't say, what, they want two gifts from me? No, no, no. Uh, ours will say Bishop's Appeal. We're going to be old school for one more year. But uh, again, you can use either one. And then you can send it in in the return envelope. But it's important on either one that you do note on your check slash on the information inside the envelope to be returned, St. Mary's Crescent. And of course, you know, we, we do thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, your contributions, just not last year or this year, both, but in years past. I mean, the, the parish here has been uh, very generous and uh, for Every year, I think, that I've been here, and probably before, uh, this parish has reached its assessment. You know, we've done that. And our assessment this year is a little lower than normal, uh, and so I'm pretty sure we're going to make this. But again, we all need to do it. Our assessment will be, it is, uh, just around $95,000. $95,000. That's in comparison to um, a couple of years ago when it was about 105000 or so. Uh, so it went down about $10,000, and there's reasons for that, and that's, um, a, uh, what do you call that? The, the way they, they formula, the, the Bishop's Appeal, the Assistant Appeal formula, it's a very convoluted thing. I was on the committee at one time, and I still don't know how it works, but uh, it went down 10 so uh, be generous. And uh, I, I say this all every year. You know, if we can truly give what we gave last year, that's a great start. If you can give a little more, that's fine too. And if we haven't given, can we think about that seriously? Can we think about giving maybe 
I don't know, two bucks a week. That that's a uh, hundred and four dollars. Can you give ten dollars a month? That's a hundred and twenty dollars. You know, and think of you know the stuff we we all waste a little money on. I hate to use that word because nothing's wasted, but you know. Um, uh, that coffee, and I heard coffee prices were going up 50%. So your coffee at wherever you get your coffee is going to go up. So, um, you know, you might say, hey, I'm going to give up coffee one day. And so you're going to say, I'm getting that, giving that four bucks, five bucks a week to, to the Vicious Appeal. But please do what you can. We really appreciate it. Um, I think, oh, I, I know should make reference to the pandemic that's ongoing. Um, as I've said in the past, uh, I certainly encourage folks to be uh, vaccinated. I know that there's efforts now to uh, uh, offer vaccinations to our five-year-olds, to 12-year-olds sometime in the next three months, and hopefully that will be happening. And hopefully we're slowly, I hate to say moving back to normal, but let's say slowly moving back to a new normal, a new normal, where we have few, if any, of these restrictions that have been placed upon us, some with very good reasons, uh, these last almost two years. Um, so please continue to be safe, you know, and healthy and that, that kind of thing. Uh, be vaccinated. But in the meantime, you know, we're starting to do other things in our lives too, you know. Uh, we're going to birthday parties, we're, we're doing this. Maybe not as often as we did, but we're starting to go back to be with other people. And we really need to continue to come back as the community, the people of God, the people of St. Mary's Crescent. And so I, I would certainly encourage you to begin to make that step if you haven't already during the next two, three months to come back to church, you know, to be there physically, to pray together physically, where able. I know there's always going to be some people that aren't going to be able to be with us in person. They're sick, they're elderly, uh, there's a blizzard, you know. Uh, those things happen, and thank God we have this opportunity to live stream the Mass so that we continue to pray in that way, but also we continue to receive the Eucharist. You know, this is the sacrament of sacraments. And so um, hopefully individually and as a family, we begin to do that in the next couple of months. And maybe one of the gifts that will be coming our way is the fact that the pandemic is near an end and come Christmas, we'll be together a lot more. And we will be into the new year. Again, mass times at St. Mary's, Saturdays, 4.30 p.m., Sundays, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And as I mentioned those mass times, it also comes to mind that, you know, it just isn't Father Joe up there, you know, or Father David now who's helping out a little bit. Um, no, good, he's up there saying mass. Thank God. Well, thank God. But we have ministries. There's a variety of ministries you know, that are associated with the Mass. We have other areas of, of outreach in the parish. All, all we need to consider is, we all need to consider, can I play a part in all this? You know, can I be a greeter at Mass? Can I maybe give out communion? Maybe can I be a reader? Can I, you know, be in the music ministry? Um, it will be a while before we have children back. Uh, can my, my child possibly be a server? You know, we're not going to probably be doing the server thing with our children until you know, Lent or a little later next year. Uh, but we'll slowly get back to these ministries. And then we have other other programs, if you will, in, in the parish. You know, faith formation. We, we need good people of faith teaching our children. You know, we have building and grounds. We, we have, you know, people who, go, who sort of an outreach to visit our sick, you know, uh, on a regular basis, whether it's weekly, every two weeks, once a month. You know, Jean Raycon coordinates that for us. And, and the list goes on and on and on. And so as we get back to going to church, how do we also live that faith? How do we take the faith we hear about into the world during the week, months, years to come? 
So uh, something to think about, and I think that's it for today. Again, be safe, be healthy, and if there's anything uh, the parish staff here uh, can do for you, just call the offices, uh, talk to somebody, and they'll put you in contact with the right person if you don't know who the right person it is. So thanks again. Take care.